Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabatifillah, a question was asked Brother Green, I have only recently been guided to the path of Salafiyyah and of course I'm still struggling with many aspects in terms of knowledge in particular, I'm quite confused on the subject of the uh, on the Sufiyyah is all aspects of tasawwuf haram and bid'ah or just some such as bay'ah to sheikhs. Also, I have read that Ibn Taymiyyah was a member of a Sufi tariqa. What does this mean if all tasawwuf is bid'ah? Jazakallah khairan. First and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And secondly, uh, as far as struggling with many aspects in terms of knowledge, all of us are struggling with knowledge and all of us hopefully are trying to increase our knowledge and better ourselves, be better slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam better and by gaining knowledge, seeking to draw nearer to Allah azza wa jal. And as far as being confused about tasawwuf, and Sufia, really there should be no confusion. Because anything, any ideology, anything which is claimed, any group or sect, we put it on we put all of those things upon a scale, a maison. And that maison or scale is the scale of the book of Allah and the scale of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So if we see any practices that go against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then we know that we don't need to practice that because that is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And if we see practices regardless of what they're called, but they are in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then we can have an indication, or that should be clear for us, that if it's truly in accordance with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een uh, practiced, and how they understood the religion, then we can be safe and we can practice that. And then we hope that we can be of those who the Prophet ﷺ said when he was talking about how the Ummah would break. And he said, Kullaha wahida. He said he was talking about all the groups, whether they were Sufis, Ashari, Maturidiyah, uh, Diobandiyah, Naqshbandiyah, uh, uh, Ahl uh, Takfir wal Hijra. Uh, the Khawarij, Akhwan um, al-Muslimin, uh, whatever group that they might adhere to and whatever sect that they might be a part of uh, or whatever ideology that they might espouse, that all of them in the fire except one. Who are they? They're Ahla Hadith. They're Ahla Athar. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullaha fin naan ila wahida. And then it was asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon I, what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu So that means that we are restricted to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon and his sahaba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin al-mahdiin. Adhu alayha bi nawajith. The Prophet ﷺ said uh, that is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin, the, the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Wa Ali, Radiallahu Ta'ala and Majmain. And that. Uh, and cling to it with your molar teeth. Uh, and beware of newly uh, invented matters. For every newly invented matter, uh, matter is going astray. So that lets us know again we are to hold to that asul, to that foundation. 
That's what Salafi is. That's what the minhaj of the Salaf is. It's following the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and what the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in were upon and how they understood their fiqh fi deen, their manners, their uh, characteristics that illustrated, that were illustrated, not their ijtihadat if it went against the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but rather were restricted to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, when it comes to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, we love him as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah because he is known for reviving the minhaj of the Salaf and codifying uh, the minhaj of the Salaf. And, you know, he went through those books. He was known as an alam in any fin that any, anything he wrote about, it was as if that was his specialty. That's why he's known as Shaykh al-Islam. And his collection of fatawa and other works are immensely beneficial and absolutely, uh, in fact, we could almost say uh, an important necessity to have and to study and to benefit from, because as I said, he codified the works of the Salaf. With that being the case, if someone says, or if you read from someone that they say Sheikh al-Islam was a part of a Sufi tariqa, then it is upon that person to bring proof for what they said. And this goes back to the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Hata burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen. Bring your proof if you're truthful. Okay, bring your proof if you're truthful. What tariqa was he a part of? And what, as much as we saw, as you read from his text, on how he was with Ahl bid'a, that he was prolific in exploring and exploiting and knowing their madhab often better than them and better than their predecessors. And he was uh, Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatul alayhi, rahmatin wasiya. So as far as uh, your question, it's a very, I have to put it in the most general terms because we can't just sit and try to study uh, Sufiya and all the various uh, uh, turk, all the various paths and all the various ways. But we have to know one thing is that as the, as the scholars mentioned, Ahla Bida Mutafawateen, Ahla Sunnah Mutafawateen, that the people of desires and innovation, they have different levels, as well as the people of Ahla Sunnah have different levels. For example, uh, from if we want to talk about Ahla Bida, we don't say someone who maybe has a general some some issues, maybe they celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu birthday. They are not like the one, as long as they don't go beyond the bounds, who goes around graves and worship graves or supplicates to the dead. So we, we understand that people have different levels of innovation or the person who, uh, you know, does some other uh, innovation which goes against the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They make bay'ah to their scholars or to their group, or their clique, or whatever. So they have different levels. Some, as a bid'ah, can be bid'ah mukaffara, and then bid'ah ghayra mukaffara. There is innovation which is outside the fold of Islam. You know, the one supplicating to the dead. How? What do they have in common with Islam? Even if they say la ilaha illallah, they are supplicating to the dead. We knew that in before we came to Islam, for those of us who entered Islam, we didn't really do that, even in our, our jahiliyyah, if you want to call it. I didn't do it. I believed in one God. I, I, didn't, I never believed in worship Jesus. I didn't say in the name of Jesus, even though the church I used to belong to, they did do that, and they would pray, and my mother and, and others prayed like that. But that wasn't a part of what I was upon. And so I didn't come to Islam to worship the dead or worship saints. And to not get off topic, the bottom line is everything we look to and we put it on a scale. So a last piece of advice I want to offer in relation to your question is that first learn what Islam and what the Sunnah is. Spend your time with that first and foremost before you learn what it isn't. So don't worry so much about tasawwuf, but ground yourself more in knowledge and then it'll become clear to you. When you see this and you say, wait a minute, you can ask them, did 
the Prophet ﷺ do that? And they say, well, no, but, okay, did the Sahaba ﷺ implement that practice or understand things as you're saying? And they'll say, well, no, but our Sheikh, but, you know, Abdul Qadir Jailani, they think said that, or they think, uh, you know, some other saint, or they think so-and-so or so-and-so said this. So then we, we know that it's, it's not it's not from evidence, which is قَالَ الله قال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. So I hope that that can be beneficial when we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.